Hi, my name is Joy Axelson. I've been working with the online SPS since 2010. I am originally from the US, but I'm currently living in Stockholm, Sweden. Today, in this lecture, we're going to be looking at some important observation and the big picture of Philippians. Philippians is one of Paul's most personal letters that we have. He's very open of his appreciation and his love of the believers there. For example, let's read uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 1 where he says, Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in this. So it shows how he has a real heart and a love and how important they are to him. He emphasizes in this book that the believers can have joy even in the midst of suffering, that this church is suffering from disunity from within the church, and it is suffering from pressures from outside the church. So we will look at these things as we look at the important observations. So let's start with some key observations and themes. You have a theme of unity, and this you can see from the repeated words all, always, and every. Example, if we look in Philippians chapter 1 verse 7, and he talks about, it is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my hearts, for we all are partakers with me of grace. Another example, chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now and not only in my presence, but much more in my absence. Another example is in chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. And then another example is in verse 13, chapter 4, where it says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So Paul includes all believers, that they can do everything together and in Christ. You also have the repeated words, one mind, side by side, same mind, so that kind of same idea of unity. And we see in Philippians 1, verse 27, where it talks about only let your matter of life be worthy of the gospel so that when I come and see you, I may hear that you are standing firm in one spirit, one mind, striving side by side for the faith. And also in uh, Philippians 2.2, 2, where it talks about complete my joy by being in the same mind, having the same love, being in one accord and of one mind. There's also the idea of unity comes out with the idea of partnership of these believers being joined together with Paul. Examples of that in chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Another example is in chapter 3, verse 10, where it says, so that, no, oh, that's not right. In chapter, oh, 3, I was in chapter 2. Chapter 3, verse 10, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, that we may share his suffering, so the idea of sharing and his suffering together. Another example is 317, brothers join into imitating me and follow my example that you have in us. So again, they're joint in unity in that. And then also the idea of unity comes through humility, and we see that in chapter 3 through 5, where it talks about humility and um, them considering others greater than themselves, and also how Jesus is the ultimate example of unity for believers. Another theme is suffering. Paul reminds them of his own suffering, which he is presently in, in prison. But he shows them the importance of living in unity against the opposition. We see that in chapter 1, verse 27 through 30. Let's go ahead and read, because we read verse 27 before. And verse 28, Do not frighten in anything by your oppositions. That is a clear sign to them of their destruction of your salvation that is from God. For it is be granted that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. So Paul reminds them 
<coughs> that they are to be in unity, but they will also suffer, just as Christ suffered, just as Paul is suffering for the sake of the gospel, they will also suffer. And so we will see more about who these opponents are. You see more about them in ch chapter 3, and we will see more of them in another lecture. Paul reminds them of who they are in Christ, and that he's working in them. We see that in chapter 1, verse 6, where it says, And now I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And we see, also see this same idea in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 through 13. Another theme, the third theme, is the ideas of joy, rejoicing, glad. And I counted six that this is repeated 16 times in the ESV version. Paul shows them that they can rejoice even in the midst of suffering, just as Paul himself does. Let's read uh, chapter 1, verse 17 through 18. The former, the former proclaimed Christ out of rivalry, not sincerely, but thinking of afflicting me in my imprisonment. What then? Only in every way, whether in pretense or truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. Through, so they, Paul is saying here that through prayer and contentment that they can be strengthened in Jesus. Paul's joy is not depending on his circumstances, but is in Christ. That he can endure in his faith in Christ. And that he rejoices at the spread of the gospel. Another fourth repeat, repeated I word and also theme in the book is the day of Jesus. Um, Paul does this. He talks about the the day of Christ, the day of Jesus, the the final day, because he wants in most of his books he talks about this because he wants his readers to have an eternal perspective and for them to endure whatever hardship they're going through as they keep their eyes on the goal that at the end they will be with Christ and that should get them through whatever they're going difficulties they're going through. Some other important observations you can observe in this book is the who, who are the people in the book. And notice when Paul is talking about the believers, he's very loving and very caring. But then when his tone talks about the opposition, especially in chapter 3, he, he, he kind of gets a little more stern with them. You can also notice and uh, color code the um, commandments. In this letter, there's also the repeated words faith and gospel. And also uh, notice Paul's love for the believers in this church. So finally, so the big picture of Philippians, after we've observed the main observations, and as you've read through the book at least one time, maybe two, we can discover the big picture of the book. And this is just the way that I put it, that through walking in humility, and following Jesus' example, the believers can live in unity and joy in the midst of suffering. So as they can walk in unity, because they're needing to walk in unity, and they are to follow Jesus' example, through doing that, they can live in un unity and in joy. So that's the end of this section. Thank you.